In this video, we will see how switch mode power supplies work on boards. We will use the example of a board from an inverter kit from Goodweather or Panavox as they use the same board. Let's take a look and get used to tracing the tracks on the board. We're going to pay more attention and zoom in a bit. With a lot of patience, we're going to trace the electricity or the electron circuits inside the board. We can see that there are two power lines, the line and the neutral. On one side, we have a coil, and on the other side, we have another coil. At this point, we have a capacitor, and at this point, we have another capacitor. These are the filter capacitors, and the coils also perform the same filtering function. If we continue along the path, we will go to this point. Now let's skip the fuse. We can see that the fuse and the varistor are a little far from the low pass filter, but they are still the same components. Here we have the line. We skip the fuse. This is the fuse symbol. We see it here. And here we have the varistor. As you can see, it is stored in this plastic. Here it tells us its voltage. If we continue to travel, we can see that here we only have bridges to be able to jump this track. These would be the W28 and W29 bridges. Following the path, we find a small thermal resistor that protects against any high temperature in the area, but simply the electrons pass. At this point, we find the four diodes. These four that are here that I have marked in black are the four diodes that produce rectification. From here, we jump with this to here, and with this to here, and with this to this point, and with this other to this last end. We will see how the diodes are configured from neutral and from the line. Let's see who two diodes we find from each side. Notice that we find a diode in reverse, another in direct, the other in reverse, and the other in direct. These are the ones that will produce the rectification. Then, from the side of the positive, which is this point that we have here, we will find the fifth diode. As I told you, it makes a division between the effect of the capacitor and the unbuffered rectification. From this intermediate point, before the fifth diode is where a sample will be taken to this circuit, which I will explain later, which is the zero crossing detection. From here, the sample is taken. If we jump to the last diode, the fifth, here we have in parallel a capacitor to which some last noise filtering coils have been placed. It is very appropriate to place them in this area. Here we have another capacitor. In reality, what this manufacturer has done is to place two 10 microfarad capacitors instead of one of 20 or 22, but has placed two of 10. Now, what do we find after? One of the two ends, or the positive, will go directly to the transformer, this is a repaired board, so you are seeing all these details. It will go to the transformer, the negative will pass through this component, and then it will go to the transformer, this component is the key that will be pulsing 90,000 to 140,000 times per second. The number of times it pulses will be fixed and constant, depending on the model of this component. These components have an 8-pin format of which generally 7 are used. For example, here we can see another, a different model. These components have their input and output on opposite sides, and the rest are different signals that it will receive. 
Not to know how many times it will pulse because that will be given to it by the same component, it is a fixed pulse. This transistor and this integrated circuit have a fixed pulse, but if there is something that will vary in the way it pulses, we will talk about it in a moment. How do we check the operation of this component that often burns out? This component, this switch is a MOSFET transistor. If we compare it with water, it is a gate valve, a gate valve that allows water to flow and blocks it. It is simply that, receiving a signal to be able to open and close. The voltage it has to receive is approximately 15 volts. Then it opens, lets the electrons pass, cuts the passage, the electrons return and through the return diodes is where the turn to the other side is produced and the alternating current of the primary side of the transformer is created. Advantages and disadvantages of this source when repairing, it has many components and is not like a conventional power supply. This makes it more complex to repair, but it also gives it some advantages. The transformer almost never breaks. The other components, such as the switch and the diodes, are easy to find. This is another advantage because it makes repair more economical. So, how do you test the operation of this component that I mentioned a moment ago? We'll see.